Mr. Crispin once again and today we're going to assemble the chassis of my locomotive. For people who've been following the videos for a while you'll have seen the construction of these two side frames but what I haven't got on video is uh, these bits down the middle. I did these before I started video work really so we'll just have a quick look down I'll explain what bits are here First up is this stretcher. This uh, has been machined and silver soldered out of steel and it holds a little axle pump that sits between uh, those two tabs. And the axle pump um, is driven by an axle and every rotation it does it pumps a little bit of water into the boiler. Moving down there's a simple round stretcher and then onto a few milled stretchers. These two are actually identical. I milled these on a bridge port um, a little while back. One sits vertically, one sits horizontally. Moving further down the line is this. And this is actually a little CNC project I did. Um, but it, it serves the same purpose. Two parallel and square faces. And that's just a, a bigger one. And finally, as the stretches are concerned, you should recognise this end one. This is something I machined about two videos ago. And basically, um, if you remember, these two uh, faces here will act as the stretcher faces and hold um, the front end apart like that. And uh, this peg comes down for something to attach onto at a later date. So that's the stretchers. We have two other components at each end and they are the buffer beams. So these bits, um, if you like, sit at the, the front and back. Here's the rear buffer beam and uh, it's basically a flat plate with slots down it that the ends of the frames will slot into. It's a cap, if you like, on the end. And that is a, a riveted assembly so the slots are made up of sets of um, angle, two pairs of angle riveted on and filed flush. And I need to produce something similar for the front end, which isn't quite finished yet. So, so down at the far end here I have a, a piece of good thick angle and I need to rivet on two pairs of angle, smaller angles, to act as those slots. The only other thing to mention at this stage is how I plan on attaching it all together. Um, so, you may remember on the other side of these frames there are a lot of countersunk holes. And it is those countersunk holes that line up with these positions. So, I'm going to drill and tap a lot of holes into all these components and they will be held with M4 countersunk screws. So, um, in case it's not clear, the side frame is like this and um, all these bits in the middle hold them uh, rigid and parallel. So the first job is going to be to finish this off with a bit of riveting and milling. Um, this is the angle I'm going to get it out of so I need to trim this down to about an inch and then true it up on the mill. So let's start by doing that. I have cut this with the grinder now, so there's enough length there to get four lengths of angle out for two pairs. As this is hot rolled steel, uh, I'm going to skim the faces to make sure that it's square over this corner. And to do that, I've chosen one face and give it, given it a light draw filing. That's going to be the datum, which we're going to make this uh, face square too. So that datum face is going to go against the fixed jaw and I'm going to clamp it up and then I can skim this face to it. But to make sure the back or the moving jaw doesn't have any influence on squareness I'm going to put a round bar behind it when I clamp it up. That way if this isn't parallel or if the jaw lifts as I clamp it up um, it should just roll and not actually pull this off the face. So that's going to go against the moving jaw like that and it will allow it to rock on this jaw to align itself with the fixed jaw.
I have cut the angles to length now and just skimmed up the edges over on the milling machine so they're all done. The next thing I need to do is put six holes in each face. They'll sit on something like that and uh, there'll be six rivets holding each piece to the big piece of angle and then later on there'll be screws coming through to hold the chassis plates in the middle of these uh, bits of angle. So to do this I've made a quick little jig and this is a, a very quick piece of milling. Um, I just got um, a cutter, went through there, zeroed the x-axis, uh, cut all this away at the same level, zeroed the y-axis, switched to a centre drill, brought it back to the uh, datum corner cancelling the backlash and then came over just using the high uh, dials to um, uh, index over and put one centre drill in and then came across to here then went all the way back to cancel the backlash and finished off those two and it'll make uh, the drilling of these much quicker and neater as you can see I don't really bother making a nice job of these kinds of little jigs because I'm only ever going to use them once I'm very unlikely to need that same hole pattern um, and the same size workpiece so these really are a one use jig and I call them a jig as opposed to a fixture because I'm led to believe there's a difference this I believe is a fixture this expanding mandrel the difference uh, as I know it is a fixture holds the workpiece such as when this is in the chuck holding uh, on a bore a jig guides the tool so this jig will be used uh, as a guide for the drill bit to go through so that I believe is a small difference a fixture for holding the workpiece solid and to locate it a jig is used for guiding an actual tool I'm just using a piece of um, 3 16th tool steel and there's not any lift in this back jaw which is nice I can feel that still just in contact and I simply um, put my jig on Uh, I've done a few little modifications, uh, the main one being I've taken a scallop out of the side of the two extreme bits and that is because this fits in from the other end into that hole and I'm going to put a cap head screw uh, in that space below this hole right into there to give it some strength because these buffers tend to be the bits people grab to pick them up so um, I'm going to make sure there's a nice fat uh, cap head screw in the bottom of uh, each buffer so that I'm not relying on these four little screws if anyone tries to pick it up. Uh, other than that I have left two of the faces, uh, the two internal faces without holes in them and I'll spot through the other angle because a screw will need to go through and line up so uh, just to make sure I don't get any misalignment I will spot those through at a later date. All that remains now is to cut uh, some slots. I don't know if you can see my lines. There we are. Um, I need to cut those slots uh, for the frames to sit in. This is the final pass now on the second slot. I've been uh, going down with the tool 20,000 times or about half a minute. So 
for measurement wise these should be 3 mil I know this one's okay can't complain with that So I'm ready to assemble this now and uh, they'll be held on by rivets, um, one eighth of an inch soft iron rivets and to get them in the right place initially I like to use a drop of super glue. So I'll put a drop of super glue on these faces, I'll line them up very carefully using a square and um, maybe a caliper and then I will let it dry. Um, then I can spot through these holes with a one eighth drill and uh, once I'm happy with all the hole positions I'll then break this off again. Then I can drill through where I've marked out, clean the super glue off all the surfaces and then rivet it on permanently. Super glue I find is a much handier holding method than uh, trying to use little tool makers clamps uh, in this kind of situation. Right so working back to front for the benefit of the viewers I'm going to put my square in here and uh, make sure it's pushed up against that side of the slot and make sure that it is square. Then I'm going to put a little blob of glue, just a normal super glue there and take my uh, angle that I've already cleaned with methylated spirit and just slide it into place and uh, pause there for a few seconds. So that's now dried in that position. Uh, now I can move on to do this one. Once I've got them both super glued in, I'll double check the crucial measurement, which is face to face. And then um, if I'm happy, I'll leave them in place. If I'm not, I can pull one of them off and try again. I'm relying here really on the distance between the insides of the slots. And I'm very happy with that measurement from when I milled it. So I'm uh, trusting that at this stage. These are on securely now and to double check the measurement I should get um, 4139. I've got 1440 there so I'll accept that um, providing they're pretty square. Got the same at the bottom. I'm pretty happy with that so now I'm going to set the end two pieces of angle in place. I'm just going to take a bit of the steel left over from the frames and I'm going to use that as a gauge to um, position my end bits of angle. I've spotted through them all there and none of the bits have come loose. Um, rather than drill all the way through one hole at a time, I like to spot them all first in case the piece breaks loose. But seeing as none have broke loose, I'll just carry on and drill all the way through now. Then at least if they do break loose, I've already got the positions marked down. There we are. As I drill the first one, the piece breaks loose. So there's my uh, principle demonstrated. I'll just break the sharp edges on the back of this and then to countersink the back. Along where these holes are uh, will be countersinks for me to hammer the ends of the rivets over into. So time to start riveting. I've countersunk all the backs and uh, now I'm going to rivet the bits of angle on. This is a rivet snap I made in a previous video um, and that is just to support the dished end of the rivet. Um, these are the rivets I'm using and uh, so one end will be dished and the other end will be uh, filed off flat in a countersink. I'll show the first few and the last few but basically that goes on. I can put a rivet in. That all gets snugged up and then I lower it onto the rivet snap. 
I won't go into huge de detail with this because I showed it all before but then using the hole in the rivet snap I suit the two bits together and then I hammer the end over in goes the next and so on Nearly there now and the jumpers had to come off one thing to mention is that with this riveting I'm relying on the hole positions to align the components that is I'm not clamping and putting one in and uh, adjusting I'm just relying on the hole positions I've drilled and I'm happy to do that because the rivets are a very tight fit in the holes One thing to mention, I snip the rivets off uh, so that there is uh, a length protruding which is one and a half times the diameter of the rivet. So these are one eighth rivets so there's roughly three sixteenths sticking out. Right, that's the last rivet in. Now to take a file and clean all those down so that you can't see any protrusions. Um, I'll probably also file that surface up while I'm at it. And then it'll be a simple matter of um, levelling those off so that they become flush with this uh, surface. Um, other than that, I think all that remains is to um, drill and tap some holes for where the buffers will screw in. I'm going to start by just trying to knock the tops off and get pretty near down the flat level then when I get near the flat level I'll draw file the whole surface up. So it's nearly finished on this face. I've draw finally it all up now and I'm pleased with the outcome. The slots are the right distance apart, all the rivets are hidden and there's no hammer dings where I've missed with the hammer and it's nice and clean. So now what I'm going to do is uh, attach on the buffers uh, and they look like this. So in there sits the buffer and these will basically sit in those holes and will be held in by four 5PA uh, screws um, as you can see here, hex head. So to mount these I'm just going to colour it in so I can see where the holes are going to be. And then taking care to line the bottom up I will spot through with a 1-8 drill. The noise, if you can hear it, by the way, is the rain hitting the roof. Now, 
Now what I'll do is centre punch all those marks and drill them the tapping size for 5BA. Well, Mr Crispin has broken a tap down here. I'm going to try and get it out and I think I've been able to free it with a little punch. I've put a layer of emery cloth around here just to allow me to tighten it up. I need to get some soft jaws for this new vice, but for now I use emery cloth. Well, it only came so far around before uh, I had to just break it out. As soon as the tap started breaking the chip, it jammed up, so I had to smash it out with a punch. And uh, I've drilled the hole out and countersunk the back. And what I'm going to do, or what I have done, is turn the little pin uh, with a countersunk end. So what I'm going to do is push that uh, into there. It's a slight interference fit, and then um, I'll file it flush each side. Then when the screw pulls this way, it'll be pulling the countersink into the um, face of that. Uh, the press fit, which is about a thousand and a half, uh, would probably hold it anyway, um, but that'll make sure. I've decided just to skim the backs of these um, buffers so that they sit nice and flat against the angle that I've filed up and so that I get a nice crisp edge. So, having screwed those front two buffers on, there is the finished front buffer beam. As for the back, uh, as I said, I've added two cap screws so that if people try and pick the locomotive up by these buffers, there's something to pull against. Um, if you hadn't worked it out, these two slots are for the main frames to slide into. Uh, something like that. So in part two I'll be taking both this one and the rear buffer beam um, with a, which has a similar arrangement of slots and uh, all the stretches that fit in the middle and I'll be attaching them all together. So I'm going to drill and tap some holes in the sides here and um, put, up, put those six holes all the way through. So uh, as for part one Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and see you on part two.